At a glance, you might assume that today's game is a children's game, or at least something suitable for a child interested in gaming. However, I wouldn't recommend letting your child anywhere near it, unless you want them to be turned off games forever. My name is Groudon, and I'm reviewing Steam games in alphabetical order to find the hidden gems among the piles of garbage, and today's game is One Hop. Let's begin. I went into One Hop expecting a short but sweet, animal-based, collection-focused game. Like a super cutesy 3D Mario game without any platforming or enemies. You know, the fun stuff. I figured it might be a bit simple, but I also assumed it was probably intended to be a children's game, so a lack of complexity is to be expected. Yeah, if I liked my child, I wouldn't let them anywhere near this mess of a game. Released on the 22nd of April 2021, developed by Fraser T and published by BM Code, this is the only game to their names. One Hop is a third person adventure game where you play as a rabbit on a journey to climb a mountain and become the King Rabbit. The world is divided into three zones and you'd need to collect a certain number of items in each in order to unlock the next and progress. It's a simple idea, but we'll be discussing shortly how it somehow manages to all go so very wrong. Now, in all fairness, if this is their first attempt at a game, then they deserve some measure of praise, because they actually released something which is more than many aspiring devs ever actually achieve. It's reviewing games like this that always serve as a reminder to myself that I'm just someone with an opinion, and that creating something is much more difficult than simply critiquing it. That said, just because you've made something, that doesn't mean it deserves praise. If a new cafe opens up and serves you the worst coffee in the world, you're not going to sit there and pretend to enjoy it. After the first sip of the rancid, burned beverage passes your lips, you're going to either not finish it, or ask for a refund. Now, as a self-titled critic, I'll take one for the team and drink the whole thing, just in case it's an acquired taste or had a layer of something awful on top, and then advise people to stay the hell away. Now that said, today's particular beverage isn't so offensive as to warrant sending in city health inspectors, but it'll make you wonder if these particular baristas even know what the hell coffee is. But enough about coffee, let's look at the actual game. For starters, feast your eyes on this title screen. This is the point in the video where I would talk about the options menu, if it had one. Moving right along and into the actual game, we're instantly in control of our player character, this frankly adorable, low poly white rabbit. They don't have a name, so this is now Larry the Bunny. Larry is controlled with standard WASD movement and E to jump. Not that it's actually needed to beat the game because there isn't any platforming and Larry is able to walk up any slightly sloped surface. There's also no separate camera control, but pressing F will toggle between a few different perspectives. Movement feels... awful. The movement animation is too slow for the speed you move at, making things feel strangely floaty and creating a disconnect with the world, and the jump always covers a set distance, feeling too rigid. Have you ever been playing a game and suddenly wondered, am I controlling the character moving in the world space, or am I actually controlling the world while a running animation plays? Yeah, that feeling of having the immersion lifted, of peeking behind the curtain, ruins a lot of the enjoyment of a gaming experience. So to notice that from the very first moment of the game doesn't exactly set it up for success. Alright, so the movement is awful, but what else? Well, the physics are broken too. There are a couple of animals dotted around, bringing some life to the otherwise incredibly flat, bland and uninspired environments, and bumping into them will sometimes cause things like this. Or this. Or even this. These moments were the most fun I had with the game. Granted, that's entirely unintentional, but they do often say the best fun is the fun you make for yourself. What we are actually meant to be doing is guiding Larry towards the mountain we can see off in the distance. To do this, we'll need to work through three zones, and each zone is unlocked by collecting a set number of items. In the first zone, Larry needs to find five carrots. This area is relatively small, but even then it could prove a little tricky, as some of the carrots don't even show any of the orange section, making it look like a simple tuft of grass. In fact, the game has several problems with the vertical Z coordinates of several objects resulting in floating blades of grass, rocks, mushrooms and so on. A sure sign that these weren't hand placed, or at least not placed with any semblance of care. Carrots collected, Larry can now access the farm. 
Here, our collection quota has doubled to 10 sacks of food. What kind of food? Don't know, doesn't matter. A couple of fun things I noticed here. Firstly, the mud in the animal pens is just a flat brown texture floating slightly above the ground. In fairness, it sells the illusion fairly well, at least until you view it from an angle and see a layer just hovering. Secondly, there is a hidden key that unlocks the barn. And by unlock, I mean that obtaining the key allows Larry to ascend to a higher plane of existence and learn how to face through walls. But only barn doors is a very specific power. And lastly, the text hint for the key, and in fact all text hints, never despawn and are visible from literally the other side of the map. Right, with all 10 food bags collected, it's on to the second last area where Larry will need to find, you guessed it, double the number of items again. But this time, both carrots and food bags. Not only is this area massive, literally three or four times the size of the previous ones, it's also guarded by a dog that will teleport you back to the start of the area if it catches Larry. Strangely, the dog simply vanished after it caught Larry the first time. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if the game took pity upon me for actually playing it. Anyway, while we're zigzagging back and forth through this area, let's alleviate our boredom by enjoying the background music. Well... We could if there was any music, but one hop is devoid of both music and sound effects. Well, if we can't expect the game to make itself more interesting, let's take a look at the Steam reviews, or rather Steam review, as there is only one. This is a great game! I liked the bit where the bunny movies around the map. I recommend if you like games where you move and jump around like a bunny. It seems they are a fan of bunnies, so that's nice, good for them. I took a closer look at their Steam account though and noticed that One Hop is one of three games they own. Whoever they are, I hope they are okay. Thankfully this third area is made somewhat easier due to the rabbit holes scattered around the actors teleports. For example, the first one you see after leaving the farm actually takes you directly to the base of the mountain and back again. Convenient if you happen to miss any of the 20 items on your first pass through. With all 20 items finally collected, we're finally able to guide Larry to the top of the mountain, traversing the winding path of floating rocks to an alcove at the top where a golden crown awaits our new bunny champion. Touching the crown ends the game, with the end screen boldly asking if I want to play it Agiam. No. No I do not. Unfortunately, reality had different ideas for me as I did indeed end up playing through the game again. Why? Well, we haven't even touched on the two-player mode yet. Yes, One Hop has a two-player mode, and it's more broken than single-player. The controls for Player 1 stay the same, and Player 2 controls Barry using the arrow keys and the spacebar to jump. Once I reached the farm area, the objective text simply failed to update whenever Larry collected a food bag, so I thought it was totally broken, but checking the counter by the fence proved it was still working behind the scenes. In the third area, it seems that the rabbit holes simply don't function in two-player mode. I also discovered that you can bypass the 20 collectibles by going to the left of the start of the mountain path and simply scaling the side of the mountain itself, Skyrim horse style. Reaching the crown plays the same ending sequence as before, there's no special ending where both players become the Rabbit King. Look, kudos to the devs for including a two player mode, but it's incredibly simplistic. If your two player mode doesn't allow for any cooperation or competitiveness, heck, even any interaction, what is the point? While I was allowing my thoughts on the game to settle, I thought I'd take another look at the store page, and that's when part of it caught my eye. After the farm, you will need to avoid the dog and get to the car. Drive the car to the base of the mountain and start the climb to become the King Rabbit. With two difficulties, one with the car and a harder one with a lot to find. I'm sorry. What? Drive the car? Two difficulties? Did I miss something? No. No I didn't. Neither of these two things are actually in the game. Being able to drive the car would explain why the stretch between the farm and the mountains is so big, but there's no car in the game, just a pickup truck. So I went back in and tested it, and no, it's definitely not drivable. So I took yet another look at the store page and looked at the screenshots again, and that's when I saw it. 
clear as day, there's a car. So I took a look at the trailer and noticed that it's almost three minutes long. And lo and behold, guess what's shown in the video? A car, just sitting out in the open after the farm area. The video shows the car driving, using rocks as ramps to launch into the air, and even knocking trees out of the way. What a shame this never made it into the actual game. But what if I told you that it actually did? Because although I can't find any evidence of it, it was definitely there. So how can I be so sure? Because one hop has one, and only one, patch note. On the 22nd of August, the devs made the following four changes to the game. Fixed loading time, higher FPS, fixed bugs, removed car. Thanks devs for removing the singular part of your game that actually looked fun. And on that note, it's time to give One Hop its final rating. Fake mud out of 10. From the right angle, it looks fine, but look too closely and the flaws are all too apparent. Thanks for watching. Larry was sponsored by Neggy Malevolent and Barry was sponsored by Theo the Cat Guy. Thousands of Larrys are abandoned every day and are in need of your care, so if you'd like to adopt a Larry, check out the membership options below. I'd also like to say a special thank you to our two Knights of the Holy Grail, Freaky Feline and Loveheart Gonzi. Lastly, thank you for being a part of this weird gaming journey, and if you made it this far, here's a sneak peek of the next game. Until next time, take care.